All right, so we have our patient. Uh, she's been complaining of some sort of neuro star. So we're going to do a neuro exam on her. So the first thing I'm going to assess is her sense of smell. And so, ma'am, can you uh, block one of your nostrils right here? All right, and so what does that smell like? It smells like mint. It smells like mint, okay. And then same story, other side. All right, what does that smell like? Mint. Mint, okay, good. And so the reason why I checked uh, both nostrils is she might have had a stroke and not be able to smell on one side. So now the next thing what we're, is we're going to uh, check her visual acuity. All right, ma'am, so what I need to do is block your eye. All right, and so you're going to look right here at my nose. So look at my nose, don't look at my fingers. And I'm going to place my fingers halfway between me and her. So how many fingers do you see? Two. Two, yeah. All right, how many fingers do you see? How many fingers do you see? Three. Okay, how many fingers do you see? One. One. All right, so same story, other side. All right, so once again, look at my nose. All right, now I'm looking at her eye. Make sure she's not looking off to the side. All right. All right, good. All right. So what I can see is that her edge vision uh, is intact. All right. So while I'm here at the eyeball, is I can have her follow my finger. All right. To the left, up, down. All right. Back across, up, down. And I'm seeing that she's making an H with both eyeballs. Now she's going to follow my finger and it's going to move all the way in. So she's going to cross eye like that. Can she follow my finger in? So you can see this one eye moved in a little bit, but that eye didn't. Right. And so a lot of people will actually have something like that at baseline. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean they had a stroke. Sometimes you develop a lazy eye. Um, and so did you have glasses or anything as a kid? I do. Yes. Okay. You do. Are you nearsighted or farsighted? Can you see what's up close or do you have trouble seeing what's far away? Okay, so she's nearsighted. She can see what's near. Uh, do you have one eye that's stronger than the other? Uh, do you notice like one of your lenses are thicker than the other? She's not sure. So worst case scenario, you could uh, take a look at her glasses. Um, are you wearing your glasses today or your contacts? I'm, I'm not. Okay, it's no contacts, no glasses. Okay. Yeah, there are other ways you could check, you know, and we'll go into that later. And so we're going to have her stand and we're going to measure her vi visual acuity. And so I want you to cover your right eye. And so, what's the smallest line you can see? Um, the eight. Line eight. All right, what does it say? Line seven. All right. Um, X, B, L, O, F, C, D. So, she got over this half of this line, right? Five, six, seven characters right here. So, she got line seven minus two errors so she's 20 25 minus two. all right so same story other side all right now what's the small sign you can see four. all right so the small sign you can see is four all right so what's this L -E -E. all right so she has 20 50 vision with one error so she's a little bit worse than 2050. So what do these numbers mean? Well, we're testing her at 20 feet, right? Uh, but the smallest thing she can read at 20 feet is what the average person could see standing 50 feet away. So standing 30 feet behind her and they can still read what she saw. Now her, uh, she had 20-25 vision. So we test her at 20 feet and the smallest thing she could see, the average person could see standing at 25 feet, or in other words, five feet behind her. Now, a lot of people think 2020 vision is perfect vision. Well, no, 2020 vision is average vision. So, the smallest thing you can see at 20 feet, the average person could see that standing up to 20 feet away. So, that's totally normal. Uh, if you had 2010 vision, that would actually be better than average vision, right? The average person would have to stand 10 feet in front of you to see what you just saw standing at 20 feet. So, now we're going to continue with our neuro exam. Here is now that we've seen how good she can see, we're going to blind her. So, I'm going to shine the light off the side, and so you can see the size of her pupil right there, right? She has dark brown eyes, so it's a little bit harder to see. But as I shine the light in here, you see how the pupil gets small, right? That's called the direct response. Now, look at this eye as well. And so, you look at the pupil size, and as I shine the light in here, this other eye is also getting smaller. That's uh, And so we actually need two cranial nerves for this. Cranial nerve C, right? So she can see the light with this eye, but cranial nerve 3 responds, and so it makes that pupil smaller. And it's not just going to be in this eye, it's going to be in both. And so if I shine the light in here, 
right? So I'm shining in her eye and that pupil's staying big. Uh, so I don't know, is she blind and can't see? Or is so cranial nerve two broken or is it cranial nerve three? So look at that eyeball. If they're both dilated, you probably can't see the light. Anyways, I shine the light in here. This one stays big, but this one gets, uh, that's telling me that, look, this one's the problem in terms of cranial nerve three. If I shine a light in here, this pupil gets small and this one stays big, that will tell me that, hey, look, that's cranial nerve three. So one of the things we did with that was we checked cranial nerve two, her ability to see cranial nerve three, her ability to respond. Uh, moving the eye right here when we were doing the H, we were checking for cranial nerve three. Here we go, can you cover the side real fast? So when she was looking down over here, you know, to the side, that's going to be the abducee. Uh, her trochlear is gonna make her eyeball move down and out. That's cranial nerve four. All the other eyeball movements, that's cranial nerve three. All right, so you can uncover your eyes, is we're going to use our trigeminal. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our patients close their eyes. For, All right, can you tell me which side I'm touching you on? All right, can you feel that? No. Good. So if she said she could, right, she would have a problem, right? Sometimes patients get nervous uh, and they won't necessarily tell you what's... So what I need you to do is I need you to raise the hand on the side that... Uh, So good, we can see that she has sensation. Uh, that's going to be the trigeminal right here. Raise your eyebrows like you're really surprised you're here. All right, good. All right, close your eyes really tight, really tight. Don't let me open them. So I'm feeling that symmetric. All right, clench your teeth. Don't let me open your uh, mouth. So good, nice and tight there. All right, open your mouth really wide. All right, say, ah. Uh, so what we're looking for is you see the back of the throat goes up uh, there. If it went off to one side, we would have a place. Have you stick out your tongue? All right, so notice the tongue is going straight out right here. Uh, if we were to go over here, we got a problem, right? You lick your wounds. And so she would have brain damage over here if she were to go off to the side. What I do, open your mouth nice and big. Right, and so we're gonna, uh, right there, yep, gag reflex. What I do is it's gonna feel like I'm strangling you, but I'm not. All right, um, so we're gonna come down behind here with art right, and swallow. So her throat moved up and down the way, uh, you know, sometimes it feels a little bit odd. We got an issue. And then on top of that, we're also can check the thyroid. Uh, you to push your shoulder to right here. Push, 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 push. Good. All right. Same story. Other side. Push, 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 push. And so what I'm looking for isn't that she's He-Man or Shaw, right? I want the strength to be bounced, right? So if this is like, oh, this is like a level 10 force. And over here, this is only a level 5. We got a problem. Uh, you know, that's not bound. All right, so push up against me. All right, so good. Nice, strong strength there. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put your hands up like you're going to fight me. All right, and don't let me move you. All right, so pull, 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 pull. Once again, we're making sure that this is an even symmetric. All right, so push out. So push, push, push. Same story on the side. Push, 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 push. All right, arms like this. So don't let me move you. All right, and once again, we're comparing our left to our right. Good. We're doing the same story with the lower extremities. Now, this is a reflex hammer. Very easy, very cheap. A lot of people, well, let's say money, and we'll just crowd each other. No, that's not a good idea. Right here, you're going to find the tendon. Just relax. All right, I, I need to do a math problem for me. Uh, 47 times 7. All right, so I keep working on that. We're checking to see what nursing home we want to put you in if you can't get it figured out. All right, and so once again, you're kind of making sure that this is nice symmetric. All right, did you got that figured out for me? No. All right, so yeah, keep working on that. So good, do I really want to do that math problem? No, it's something to keep her busy. So a lot of times what happens is patients are like, okay, uh, I'm supposed to jerk when he hits me and they'll overdo it. And so if you keep them busy, um, it'll, it'll stop them from doing that with you and you'll get a better appreciation. Um, here is a tuning fork. Sometimes they'll do it with just one tuning fork. Sometimes they'll do it with two tuning. As you hit it, is you're going to block off the ear. Uh, can you hear that? All right. So another thing you could do is, where does it sound like it's coming from? All right. Does it sound louder in the right ear or the left ear? Pretty. Yeah, and that's a good. Uh, another test you can do uh, to test the hearing is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to block this ear and I'm going to whisper a word in your So can you repeat that? All right, and I'm going to do the same story, other side, airplane. Airplane. And so the reason why I block off the ear that I'm not testing is watch this. All right, so she's deaf in this ear. I'm blocked. Right, she could hear me even though she's deaf in that ear at all. So you don't want her to.
to here with the ear that you're not testing. And so you're going to block off the ear that you're not testing to make sure that the only ear that she's able to use is the ear that you're testing. All right, so now we're coming down to the leg. We're going to check the reflexes right there. All right. And so, all right, so maybe she's not reflexing right there because her legs are on the ground. Ma'am, can you cross your legs real fast? All right, so at the knee. To cross them up. Yep, there we go. All right, so we're going to go over here. Yeah, so there's a slight uh, jerk right there. If you saw that, all right, so same story on the side. All right, so once again, we found the uh, tendon, the patellar tendon. Go right there. And yes, we did have a little bit to do. We're going to uh, take her foot. We're going to get ankle cock back a little bit. All right. And so you saw that foot kind of go back there. Yep. Right. Now this is the Babinski test. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, yep, we're going to do seven like that. So good. All right. We're going to go like this. So good. I'll do. Ma'am, can you go like this real fast? So come. excellent. I want you to do Palm down, flip, palm up. So like this, as fast as you can, just like that. So good. Uh, one of the things you can see in some of your elderly is something called dystaticokinesia. They're having trouble with rapid alternating movement. So, right, they're not flipping back and forth like she did. Is I'm going to move my finger back and forth. I want you to touch your finger to your nose, and then you're going to touch it to my finger. Go back and forth. Yep, so you're going to touch it to my finger. All right, back. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, can you move it? I uh, can you hit it as I move. Good, yeah, and so she can make uh, those corrections. One of the things you see in people with cerebellar damage is they'll have an attention tremor, or they'll have what's called dysmetria. And so, can you move your finger back and forth for me real fast? Uh, uh, right there. So I'm having trouble doing it. Right. You can also see what's called serpentine movement. So you see where I'm kind of going up and down because I'm not able to make those corrections like I should. Next thing, ma'am, we're gonna have you stand up real fast. All right. So feet shoulder width apart. All right. Your hands, palms upward, fingers spread. So now I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna have you close your eyes. And so what this is looking. It's basically a posterior calm disc that so she's not able to feel where her body's at in space one of the things i like to do with my old patients is i actually push right and so why is that all right so right here good so she's not going to fall if she trips over fluffy or whatever right now if she, all right, you can open your eyes so now if you see where i'm right here if she had fallen i could catch her so she wouldn't fall down oh good she has good bounce we're going to have you walk over. all right and backwards Yep. So backwards. All right. Now we're going to do a field sobriety test. Uh, basically, toe to toe, right? Straight line, tight rope. Good. All right. And backwards. One of the reasons why the police do this is they literally are looking for cerebellar dysfunction caused by drinking alcohol. So good. All right. Um, and we got everything. All right. That concludes today's episode. If you liked what you heard, be sure to click the subscribe and like button down below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's any particular topic you'd like me to create a video on, let me know in the comments down below. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.